What is going on everyone, I'm Adriano and this video is about how to write your data as Parquet files to AWS S3 with partitions using AWS Glue. I will also show you how to define our dataset as a table in the Glue catalog through Spark. This will be a technical tutorial walking through the Python PySpark methods and the parameters in order to achieve this. By the end of this video, you'll see that we'll have written our data to partitions by our order underscore date column in our data lake in AWS S3 and the table is accessible by other AWS services. All right, so I'm in a Jupyter notebook here that is using Glue Pi Spark. In my last video, I showed us how to read in this data and create a dynamic frame from it. So if we take a look at our data schema here, we can see we have four columns. We got an order ID, customer ID, total amount, and order date. So we want to write all of these columns to a Parquet data set. However, before we can write it, we want to make sure that our schema is defined correctly in our data frame. And as you can see here, all of them right now are being defined as a string. However, this is not correct. So before I can write it out, I want to make sure I'm transforming this. So in AWS Glue, we can perform this transformation using the apply mapping transform. So we're going to go ahead to do that. If your data is already mapped correctly in your data frame, you can skip this step. All right, so I'm going to create a new dynamic frame called order data frame transformed and we're using the apply mapping transform. So our first parameter is gonna be frame, and this stands for data frame. We're gonna make this equal to our data set that we've read in above. So we're gonna use the order underscore DF. All right, so the second parameter we wanna add is called mappings. The mapping parameter is going to contain all the columns that we wanna transform, as well as passing the other columns we wanna include on right as well. This takes a list and within the list is going to be a tuple of every single column that we want to be mapping to the new schema or passed to this variable. So I'm going to go ahead and pass my first column and just explain what this is doing. This is the column from the original data set, the original data type, and then the renaming of it in our new data frame. And then finally, what the data type is. So we're saying this data set is coming as a string and we want this to be an integer. Great. I'm going to go ahead and add the other four columns that we want to transform. And then we want to make sure we're just closing off our list. Great. And the last parameter we want to pass, this is optional, but if you're using glue bookmarking, then we should be passing this and it's going to be transform underscore CTX. And we're just going to give that a unique name, which I'm going to call order DF transformation. I'm just going to close that off and in order to test to make sure this ran successfully, we can now use the print schema method again. So I'm just going to paste that here, make sure we're passing in the correct variable and let's hit print schema. Great, so now you can see here that our order ID and our total amount has changed its data type. All right, now we're ready to write to AWS S3 in a Parquet format that is partitioned. All right, so we're gonna create a new variable called write underscore S3 Parquet. There's going to be an object from the get sick method that we're going to use next. So from the glue context class, we're going to use the get sync method. So we're using this method in particular instead of the dynamic frame writer class because our glue catalog table currently doesn't exist and we want to create our table in our glue catalog as we're writing this data in a parquet format. All right, so since our target is AWS S3, our path is going to be our S3 bucket and the directory that we want to write to. So we can see here we're writing to this bucket and it's going to be in the order directory under the process folder. We're going to make the connection type equal to S3. And the next parameter is going to be called update behavior. So this controls when we're creating our glue catalog table. So we have two options for this parameter. We have update in database. And what this does is it allows us to create a table in the data catalog. And when it runs again to, let's say, write new data, it's going to update the schema and add new partitions. So if your schema is going to be evolving, this is the parameter you want to use. And the other option is a parameter called log. So when we use this parameter, if we write to the table in future glue jobs, it's going to keep the existing schema. If our schema changes on subsequent runs, it's not going to use the new schema. It's going to use the original schema that we define. So because I want to add new columns to my glue catalog table in the event my raw data set changes, I'm going to use the update in database option for this parameter. Great. So next, I'm going to add in the parameter called partition keys. And this allows us to add partitions to our data set. So if we do not want to write to our S3 bucket with partitions, then we can skip this parameter. So this parameter is going to be a list of the columns we want to make our partition. 
So if we look at our data, I want to use order date as my partition. So we're going to get a new folder in our S3 bucket and directory for every order date. So I'm going to pass that column name as a string. Next, if you want to control compression of your data set, we can add the compression parameter. And we have a couple values to choose from. I believe there's only gzip and bzip. So I'm going to add compression for each file that we write. So I'm just going to make it equal to gzip here. So next, in case that we run this job again and there's new partitions that are added, we're going to add the enable update catalog and make that equal to true. And finally, we're going to add the transformation underscore CTX parameter that is needed for the bookmarking feature. And I'm just going to make that equal to write underscore S3 part K. Right. Oops, I spelled context wrong in glue context. So let's just fix that there. All right. Before we can run this, there's a couple more steps we need to do. We need to set the actual glue catalog database and the table we're writing to. Before we can execute this block of code, we're going to add write underscore S3 underscore part K to set catalog info. We're going to pass the parameter to control the database name. So catalog database parameter is going to be equal to my customer database that is in the AWS glue catalog. Then I'm going to pass the name of the table we want to write to within that database. And I'm going to be writing to the order database. This table does not have to exist. You can use any name that you see fit to identify your data set. Next, we're going to be setting our data format we want to write to. So we're going to be using the set format parameter and we're going to set it to glue parquet. And this is going to save the data set as a parquet format. Finally, to execute all of this together, our last method we need to use is write frame. And now we're going to pass in our data frame we want to write. So I'm going to use that transform data frame that we've created above, and I'm going to paste that in here. All right, so if I run this, we should create a new table in our glue catalog, as well as writing the transform data to S3. Before I run that, I want to make sure that our variables are all named the same, so it will work. All right, let's go ahead and give that a run. All right, so we got a message back saying we have a dynamic frame object has been created. So we know that this operation has been successful. So if we head over to the AWS Glue catalog, and if I refresh my customer database tables, we now see we have our new order table has been created. And if we head over to AWS S3, so within our AWS S3 bucket, if I refresh the folder that we wrote to, we now see all of our partitions have been added as a new folder. And within each folder, we now have our parquet data set that is zipped. And the last thing we can do to make sure our data is actually queryable is if we head over to AWS Athena, assuming you've set up permissions correctly, we refresh our catalog in AWS Athena. We now see that fourth table has been added. And if we just do a select statement on our table, we now get our data being returned. I hope this video was helpful on writing Parquet files to AWS S3 with AWS Glue. If you learned something or think this video will be helpful for others, please hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing if you're interested in more videos on data engineering on AWS. Thanks again and see you next time.